Shalom, mom, sister. Shalom, mom. Kohalo, Yahweh, Hashem, Hamashiach, Bamalak, Yahushai. All honor and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai. Lord willing, y'all are feeling really good through the Spirit. I'm excited to be here this Sabbath to do another video for y'all. I know it's been two months, but y'all, I really, I really just haven't had it in my spirit to do a video, and I really just feel like I, sometimes I don't know what to even do a video on. I feel like I've done, um videos on everything that I really need to speak on as of now well besides this video but I don't know I just feel like you know, it just hasn't really been in my spirit to do a video and I've been really busy you know we, we're all busy you know children work um, you know the congregation is growing um, counseling you know it's just it's, it's, it's extremely busy I'm very grateful but yeah, I don't want to neglect my YouTube and make sisters feel like, you know, something is wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Where you at? I'm just checking in. I'm fine, y'all. I'm just busy. I'm just, I'm just trying to manage everything and, you know, still at the same time take care of myself. But I'm here and Lord willing, this video gets up, uh, uploaded through the spirit. This is real time. I cannot go back and edit this video. So... If you hear somebody screaming, somebody fighting, a dog barking, animals fighting, just, it's nothing I can do about it. I'm so sorry. Thank you for your patience, okay? So let's just hop right in there. So this video is about being content and really turning not being content into righteousness, okay? So like you're turning covetedness into righteousness. So let's just hop right in there. And this just has been something on my spirit because, you know, we're really going through tough times right now as a people where, you know, some people can't even afford to buy groceries, can't even afford to buy gas, can't afford to pay for their children's daycare, can't, you know, keep their phone on, the lights on. You know, we're living in really, you know, and it's only going to get worse. You know, the inflation, it's just bad. You know, it's very terrible and it's, it's just something that, you know, honestly, we have to go through as a people. And we were talking about this. It's so the spirit because this morning I just woke up and it was like, okay, boom, 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 you know, just writing out this lesson for today. And then we end up talking, end up getting brought up on our, um, our sister's chat that I'm in. And we were just talking about being content and, you know, just with what you see in today's society. You know, sometimes if you're on Instagram, if you're on social media, Facebook, YouTube, you may, you may see people, you know, living their life a certain way that you would, a lifestyle that you would desire. Sorry, I'm supposed to be doing instrumentals, but it just... You know, you might see a lifestyle that you desire... But at the end of the day, you know, you might sit down, you might feel depressed. You might feel like, well, when is this going to happen to me? Like, you know, that spirit can hop on us and it's almost like temptation can hop on you. And you think like, well, well, that what that job is paying, you know, a lot of money. But all I got to do is work one day on a Sabbath. All I got to do is get a vaccine. All I got to do is, you know, break a commandments and break any one of the commandments. And then now you're compromising, you know, who you are as a person just to because you have a spirit of covetousness and you can't be content. So let's just hop right in there. So this is um, Philippians 4, 11 through 12. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be con lucky, how to be abased. And I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. So when you really think about what it means to abound, that is to be full. So you have to look around when you feel like, you know, you don't have enough or you feeling covetous. You have to really look around and think about all of the things that the Lord has blessed you with, whether it's a roof over your head food in the refrigerator. Some people are in a homeless shelter. Some people don't, can't afford food. Food is outrageously expensive. You, if I get something from Instacart, I might get seven things and it's going to be $63. It's going to be 60, 70 something dollars. So people can't even afford food. So if you even have, 
enough to make a meal in your home, then you should be joyful and abounding that and thank you how about Shimmy Al Shai. You might want like I was telling sisters today, you might want a whole new wardrobe. You might want to do, you know, you might want a garden, a full garden. You might want a new house, five bedrooms, four bathrooms, outside, um, fenced in yard. You might want these things that you see in this captivity, but you have to really take the time to think about what you have and be content and be grateful for the things that you have. Let's say you wake up in the morning and you like, dang, all praises to the most I can't even see out of my eyes. It's because Tobit couldn't even see. And he was more righteous than, you know, any of us. We never had to bury dead bodies and do the works that he did. He couldn't even see. So just getting up in the morning to even be able to open your eyes is a blessing and it should be enough for us. So and even to just get up and sit up, you know, to not be bound to a wheelchair, to not be bound sick to a hospital bed. You know, we really have to be abound in all of the things that the Lord blesses us with and be really grateful for those things because the Lord can give and the Lord can take away. Understand that. All right, so let's go into Let's go into how covetous is a sin. So let's go into that real quick. All right, this is Exodus 20 and 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So even when you see these things, you may see a sister, she may be more well off than you the lord may have a different lot for that sister she may have things that you may want whether it's she may have a handmaid she may have cattle she may have um a big family that you desire but at the end of the day you can't covet what another person has because that truly puts the spirit on you to have envy strife um uh what's the other to even almost be a murderer. So you don't want to put, you don't want to have that spirit on you. When you feel like you're starting to want something that somebody else has, you truly have to rebuke that through the spirit. Because if you entertain that, you're only entertaining more spirits. Okay. So let's go to, let's go to, um, Exodus. No, so lucky. Ecclesiasticus 14 and 8. 14 and 8. Alright, this is Ecclesiasticus 14 and 8. The envious man hath a wicked eye. He turneth away his face and despiseth man. And I feel like that kind of goes into also having an evil suspicion. Where it can overthrow your judgment, like the scripture says. So, if you have that, if you're covetous, then you that kind of goes into being envious, and you kind of you know despising people. Like you know, you kind of got an evil suspicion, thinking that people think that they're better than you, thinking that um, you know people are purposely trying to vex you, etc. Whatever the case may be, that's kind of having a, a wicked eye, and also going almost above and beyond to get what that person has and I want to bring that out um, well first let's get Ecclesiasticus um, 10 and 9 oh wait no this is not Ecclesiastes I think this is oh it's Ecclesiastes so I can I can't even read my own <laughs> handwriting. This is sick. Hold on, this not Ecclesiastes. I must have wrote my precept down wrong. Hold on.
I told y'all y'all gotta be patient with me. Yeah, I did it right. Ecclesiasticus 10 and 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such a one setteth his own soul to sell, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. So you, you'll you be willing to do... It's nothing worse than being covetous. Because you'll be willing to do anything. Like I was bringing up before, you'll be willing to break the Sabbath. You'll be wi willing to... Some people, just to get what they want to get, they be, they're willing to commit adultery. They're willing to go above and beyond prostitute themselves do whatever they got to do to get what they really want to get what somebody else wants instead of being content with what the Lord has for them or has in their life at the moment and kind of not being content and being covetous and envious that all kind of goes down into also not trusting Yahweh by Shimei okay let's get um Proverbs 30 and 8. Hopefully, hold on. We're going to read Proverbs 8, I mean Proverbs 30. 8 and 9. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still, and take the name of my God in vain. And that's and that's really what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, you want something. Let's say, for instance, I brought this example up earlier today. If somebody could win a lottery. They could win, let's say somebody's like, oh, they just praying constantly, praying constantly. They're not praying for knowledge, wisdom, understanding. They're not using Solomon as an example saying, well, look, Solomon asked for knowledge, wisdom, understanding. The Lord blessed him with that, and he blessed him with riches. But you have some people out here that's really praying for um, money. They're praying for money. They're pray praying for glory, for fame. So let's say, for instance, the Lord blessed someone with, it could be a sister. You know, she's like, I just, I really need some money. I really need some money. And she ended up winning the lottery. She won the lottery, hit it big, and then all of a sudden, you know, you just kind of forget the Lord. Because you got everything that you need. And what a lot of our people need to understand is that we're in this position because we went off. And the Lord knows exactly what's good for us. Just like if we make our children a plate of food, we know that this is enough. Because if you eat too much, you're going to be sick to your stomach. You're going to be throwing up. You're not going to be well. And it's the same thing for us. We mess around coming to a whole bunch of money. Lord knows where our spirit will be. That's, a, that's exactly why I really love this precept because it says, least I be full and deny thee. Because if we're full and fat off of riches, a lot of, a lot of these people, they deny the Lord. I just saw an interview with the rapper JT. She pretty much, they asked her, do you want riches? I mean, do you want um, something about serving? I don't want to bear false minutes, but she said, they asked her about God. It was either having God or money. And she chose money. She chose money over the Lord. I don't know if y'all seen that, but I was just like, Ugh, like you these these women, these celebrities are nasty. You choose you're choosing money over serving your how about Shim Yal Shai like this place is gonna be around forever. You know, this is this is not our arrest. It truly isn't. But least I be fooled and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Talking about who who do I need the Lord for? That's that was her mind frame. She doesn't need the Lord like we need Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Or at least I be poor and still and take the, the name of the Lord our God in vain. Or you end up being poor and you're still in stuff. So the Lord, you know, the Lord is very merciful to us for even for us to not be in a position to even have to steal or to be in a position where where we're denying him okay let me go I got another precept hey Amaya you gonna have to get out if you gonna if you gonna keep doing all that 
All right, this is Psalms 37 and 25. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You know, the, if you're keeping the commandments, the Lord is going to provide for you. He's going to make sure that you have food, make sure that you have shelter, make sure you have clothes to wear. And let's get that, Matthew. Hey, y'all got to get out. Y'all have got to get out. Get out. No, 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 no. It's Matthew 5, 17. Uh, Matthew 5, 17. And, um, oh, sorry. So I can, uh, can y'all get out of here with that? Sorry, y'all. Get out. Get out. Get out. Alright, this is Matthew. Hold on. I'm so sorry, y'all. So watch me. I'm doing a video right now. Go upstairs. Go upstairs. Go upstairs. Give it back to him. And go upstairs. I'm so sorry, y'all. They, they over here distracting me. This is uh, Matthew 6 and 28. And why take you thought for... Nehemiah, be quiet! It's Matthew 6 and 28 and 29. And see, y'all, this, this is why I can't do videos. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all. I can't, I can't do them like how I want to do them because it's always something. But this is Matthew 6, 28 and 29. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed in one of these. But well, hold on, let's go up some more. So I can... We're going to start at 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought? For raiment, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they toil not, neither do they spin. And I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not, so like it, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye have little faith? That's why I was just saying, like, when you are coveting stuff, and you want more, it's like... And you're not content and you kind of have that you know kind of doing whatever it takes to get what you want it goes into having a little bit of faith not having any faith that the Lord will bless you with the things that you really need to have what he's saying that he will do in Matthew um, it's like yeah Matthew chapter 6 so like yeah let me go down Therefore take no thought, saying, What we shall eat, or what shall we drink, or whether with shall we be clothed, for after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that, so like you knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself, sufficient unto the day of the evil thereof. So it's no point of even worrying about tomorrow. It's no point of worrying about, you know, what am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to wear tomorrow? Just trust the Most High, have faith. And that kind of goes into, I was just telling my um, son this the other day that, you know, a lot of people, they, they don't live by faith, but we have to. We have to live by faith in everything that we do. All right, so let's go back. Alright, so let's go back 
to um so lucky y'all let's go back to Philippians 4 and 12 I know both how to be content so lucky how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need so let's get one more precept that I want to bring out too. It's 1 Timothy 6 through 10. 1 Timothy 6, chapter 6, verse 6 through 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is for certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some have coveted after, and they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And this kind of reminds me of this precept or well, this um, these verses, they remind me of just how when people get rich, it's never enough for them. You know how rich people they they freak off and they they have all type of weird parties. They they having a glass of wine isn't enough for them. They have to go above and beyond. They have to do cocaine. They have to do all that weird, wicked, evil stuff. Um, even drinking blood. It's like it's just they're giving themselves over to too much, um, too many lust because they have too much money. They don't know what to do with themselves. They fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish. It's foolish. That's foolish to drink blood. That's foolish to sit there and defile your body with cocaine. It's foolish to do the things that they do, but they have so much money. And then that's why you have to be content with just clothes, food, just what the Lord blesses with. Because you end up getting some money and you end up going off, denying the Lord, falling into a foolish sick lust it's bad all right so now let's go back to um, all right so I wanted to bring out um, Ephesians 4 14 so like Ephesians chapter 14 17 through 20. For this cause I bow my knees unto nope, so like you. Wrong verse. So let's go back to Ephesians chapter um four, twelve, and the point where it says, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry. So that made me think about Matthew five and six. Blessed are they that so like you, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So I was meditating on this and I was just like, you know, just I was telling sisters this earlier, like just as much as you can get up in the morning, when you get up in the morning, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you know, you want to have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, you want to eat, you want to, you know, wash your face, you want to do everything of the flesh, but we, it has to be spirit on a spiritual level as well. We have to want to hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's why I like when he said, I know how to be full and to be hungry. So now let's go to, um, okay, blessed are they that which hunger and thirst after righteousness. Let's go to Romans 10 and 5. For Moses described the righteousness, which is the law, that the man doth those things shall live by them. So the law is righteous. The scriptures, the, you know, meditate when you get up in the morning. Before you even drink anything, you should go straight to the scriptures. Before you even eat anything, you should go straight to the scriptures. Before you go to any social media platforms, you should go straight to the scriptures. Blessed are they that are the it's like a blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Which is the law. Alright. And that goes into walking in the spirit to fulfill the lust of our flesh. And let's just pull that out. Galatians 5, 16 and 26. Let me pull that out. Let's 
Co je? Oh shoot, look at that one. Alright, so let's pull this out. I guess it's good that I'm taking, that I'm, you know, it's like in the moment. So y'all can take y'all time and pull the precepts out too with me. Alright, so this is Galatians 5, and we're going to start at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the Spirit, ye are not under the law. So like yet, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, with witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Hamashiach Yehawashai have crucified the flesh with the affections and with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another or envying one another. So, this is how we truly walk in the spirit, so that we're not fulfilling the lust of our flesh, meaning that we're meditating on the law day and night. Let's get that. And then let's get. Um, Oh, and I want to bring out another precept. Now I just thought about it. This is um, Psalms 1 and 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And then let's get Joshua. Some of these I didn't write down. So y'all got to bear with me. Because I'm putting them in there. Hold on. This is Joshua uh, 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. And then let's bring out um, how the Lord will give us according to our works. Because if you so focused on being in the flesh, if you so focused on having more money and having the things that you don't have, if that's your main focus, that's idolatry at the end of the day. And the Lord is going to give every woman, every man, every child according to their own works. So you want to make sure that your works is not consisted of worrying about what somebody else got, what somebody else doing, and more so taking that and focusing on yourself and building yourself up through the Spirit. I feel like I just got deja vu. That's weird. Um, let's get Revelations 12 and 22. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. But, um, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the tree of life and may enter into the gates of the city. And I was telling sisters earlier today, when it comes down to the, having that covetous spirit and just the desire of wanting more in this captivity it all comes down to us initially just really wanting to get the kingdom of heaven that's what it comes down to you know we want to have cattle we want to have um you know animals and ducks and chickens and you want to have man servants and maid servants and you want to you know live in a mansion you want to live the life that you know in the spirit that you're called to truly live we're, we're princesses you know we we used to having handmaids and servants the life that we live in this captivity is not a life of leisure it's not the life that you know we're really used to through the spirit because we're used to 
you know, having the desires of our heart. But, you know, like it says in Baruch, you know, we are yet to stay in captivity because we went off. And now we, you know, we're in a position to really get our mind right and focus on the kingdom of heaven. That's why I always bring out in almost all of my videos, Matthew 6 and 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem shine his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you put in the Lord first, and he's your priority and your main focus, then all of those things will be added unto you. Everything that you want will be added unto you. And let's get Ephesians um, chapter 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, Hamashiach Yehawashai, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by his spirit in the inner man. Verse 17, that Yahweh shall dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love, which is keeping the commandments, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth and height, and know the love of Yahweh Shai, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. And that's what we have to be filled with, the fullness of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, that's that's what when you that's what you should be full of. And I was meditating on that precept, you know, this morning, and it was just like this strong breeze, and I was like, dang, the most high is just, you know, amazing. You know, call hello how about Shimmy Al Shai. You know, we should be fulfilled and we should be content with just knowing that we're Israel. Just knowing that what's promised to us. That's what we should feel content and that's something that we should look forward to you know how like some people they'll be like oh i want to go on vacation because i need something to look forward to i need this you know jake we like things to look forward to but at the end of the day every single day we got something to look forward to the kingdom of heaven when you when you plan a vacation when you plan a feast day it's not promised it's not promised that you're going to be able to go it's not promised. The whole time you be scared thinking like, Lord willing, Lord willing. Because the Lord don't got to have us plan out Pentecost. You don't got to have us celebrate Pentecost. You just the whole time saying, Lord willing, Lord willing. You know, but the kingdom of heaven, you know, that's promised to us. If we're doing what we're supposed to be doing through the spirit. And I want to bring out Ephesians 14 and um, verse 20 just to continue it on. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. The Lord can do above, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask for and can even think. And that makes me think about um, this precept in Matthew. I mean, First Corinthians, like you. This is 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. We don't know. We, you know, we see the little clips that brothers and sisters make, the AI images that, you know, they make of just us overall being in the kingdom and the brothers being happy and the sisters being content and having the animals we see these things but we can't imagine what it's really going to be like you if you can look up the most beautiful place on this earth earth and it's not going to be compared to the kingdom of heaven and that's something that we have to look forward to that's what we look forward to and that's what our foremothers and forefathers look forward to and we can bring that out This is Acts 1 and 6. Mm, let me just go to the... I, got my, I should just go to the Bible. Let me just go to it. Because my phone is acting slow for some reason. Alright, this is Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? 
And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. So they were even asking back then, like, what we are we gonna is the kingdom of heaven we'll be getting a kingdom when it's gonna be restored into us again. We still gotta be here and kept you know, in this flesh. We still have to go through these things. You know, so they had that sign name somebody <laughs> They had that same mind frame that we have now. Like, when are we going to get up out of here? But we have to be patient. We have to be patient and we have to be thankful and really just run this course. We have to run this course here while we're here. So, I can get it. It's Hebrews 12. One and two. Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great, so lucky, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahweh, the author and finisher of our faith, who for Slaki, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand and the throne of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Yahweh I mean Yahweh. So, you know, we, we have to run this race with patience. And that's with anything that we have in our life. And I was telling sisters earlier to be transparent, but this is an example. Maybe about it was maybe about three years ago we were trying to sell our house because we were like let's just try to find something else let's try to you know let's find something bigger you know we were looking for like a dream house and you know we fixed the house up we did everything that we could we had an offer an amazing offer and long story short it all just it came down to it that we were not going to sell the house so Afterwards, I was I was genuinely I was just I was hurt, you know. I was hurt. I put a lot of work into the house. I put a lot of you know. It was we put a lot of money into the house. A lot of I was I was hurt, you know. And I just remember afterwards, you know, I really put my focus on just really examining myself. Like at least we have a house. Be content, you know. Of course, you know, be content. At least we have a house. But I remember prior to all of that, I've tried gardening. You know, I've tried gardening maybe about four years ago. The first two years of me trying to garden, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. I would try to, you know, get my seedlings. You know, sisters inspired me to garden. I'm like, look, y'all help me out. You know, what I need to do, what I need to get. I got everything I need to get. Um, I just... I tried my best and nothing ever grew. Nothing ever grew. And it was just like, okay, I give up. And then after, you know, we didn't, and it's crazy. Yeah, after we didn't um, sell the house, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to really put my all into gardening. I'm going to put my all. And I, I had faith. And I remember I was praying. I prayed over my garden. I had faith that it was going to grow. And after that, that was the first time that I was ever able to successfully harvest anything from my garden. And ever since then, it's just been flourishing from for the past, you know, every season. So, you know, to say that is to say that, you know, the Lord gives every needful thing in due season. And sometimes we want things that you may want, you know, what somebody else got. You may want you know all the outfits all the clothes all the, a lifestyle certain lifestyle but at the end of the day you just have to really be content with what the lord gives to you and really make the best out of what you have and i remember when i started my garden i didn't i didn't have it to buy a full-blown big garden bed i didn't i was like i don't we, we just bought this money in this house let me use be resourceful like moses mother and make my own garden bed and I made my garden bed out of a um a closet door <laughs> and it's still holding down and you know what and it's very humble and I almost don't you know I need to get rid of it but I don't but it's the most high you know he will definitely humble us and he will definitely you know show us what's really important ultimately at the end of the day 
is really focusing on him. And when when the opportunity comes for you to want to get the desires of your heart, the Lord, he'll see fit to bless you with it. Hold on, let me get that. I need a cup of water, y'all. <laughs> Hold on. I'm talking, look at me. I'm, I'm talking about a um a cup of water. Look, we I got we got a hunger and thirst after righteousness, so I'm good. All right, this is Ecclesiasticus 39 and 33. All the works of the Lord are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season. You know, you could think that you could, you know, in your mind, you might want to do this. You might want a, a new car. You might want a, a new house. You might want a garden. You might want a certain lifestyle, but the Lord might not see it fit for you. And the Lord will give it every needful thing in due season because you can get it. And eventually, like we brought up before, you going off. You don't, you're denying the Lord. You're too full to the point where you're, you don't need the Lord. Like these rapper chicks, they're saying that they'd rather take money than serving the Lord. I guess we can finish it too. It's Ecclesiastes 39 and 34. Well, I'm going to start back at 33. All the works of the Lord are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season, so that a man cannot say this is worse than that, for in time they shall all be well approved. And therefore praise ye the Lord with the whole, with the whole heart and mouth, and bless the name of our Lord. Barakatai haobah shim yaoshai, and kaholoi haobah shim yaoshai. All praises to the Most High because, you know, it's going to get hard out here. So the little things that we got now, I'm not trying to make this a movie, but the little things that we do have now in this captivity, we have to be grateful for. And sometimes if you see, even though like how y'all just saw, my kids just came in here and started to act a fool. But I'm grateful that I have my children. I'm grateful that they're in the truth. I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head. I'm grateful for you know, food in a refrigerator. I'm just grateful for all of these things that we take for granted because at the end of the day, I know that this is not going to be always be here. I know we're going to be pilgrims on the earth. I know that we're going to have to forsake everything to get the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have none of this matters. We're going to have to forsake all of this. You're going to have to forsake your house. Sometimes you might have to forsake your family members just to get the kingdom of heaven. And that's something to meditate on. Just be grateful for what you have because the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And you don't want to put yourself in a position where, again, you're covetous and the Lord see it and it displeases him. And he snatched whatever it is that you do have away from you. You know, and the Lord, he just gives every needful thing in due season. You may want this, you may want that. Just like with the garden, I wanted to start a garden. I wanted it, but it just wasn't working out. But the Lord gave it to me after we took a L and it was like okay you know now I'm ready to really meditate on more because when you have a garden you 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 learn a lot through the spirit you meditate on a lot through the spirit so just you know whatever it is that you need whatever it is that you want the Lord is the Lord will give it to you if he see fit if it's according to his will and you just have to have patience and have faith in you how about Shem Yashem Okay. And I think that's it. I'm just looking over a few more precepts. Mm. All praises to the Most High. Call the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, y'all. I'm so grateful to be able to do this video for y'all. We nearing it's it's about to be 45 minutes long i just hope sisters take this video and really just sit down if you feeling um covetous rebuke that spirit if you if you're not feeling content then you need to go ahead and write a list of all the things that you're grateful for that you have in your life and you need to thank the most high the wadi yahabashimiyah for blessing me with a bed a roof over my head, 
food in the refrigerator, the water, the water, the water. The water for my phone being on. I work in, um, how can I put this without telling you all my information? <laughs> I work in like social services. So some people, they, they like, look, where can I go to get my lights turned on? My phone is off. I don't have any food. And I just be like, dang, you know, people going through it. People are going through it. People are people be people say that they're homeless. I, I always hear people say. I remember I was talking to this one man. He he was homeless. He didn't have. He said. He said I don't have anything. I'm homeless and I'm trying to make it work. People are out here struggling. So you when you make this list of all of the things that take a look, boy. Take a list of of so like you all write a list of all of the things that you're grateful for, and then I want you to take another list of all of the things that you want and ball it up and throw it in the trash. Okay, I, I mean it. Ball it up, crumble it up, and throw it in the trash. Because if if it's at a Lord, you're not focusing on that. You're not focusing on that. You're going to focus on what you're grateful for. Just like with children, I always kind of like view, although we know that we don't know the thoughts of the Lord, but when I meditate on things like this, like for example, if you have children and you, or you are auntie or auntie and you, um, you know, give a child a toy, but they're always breaking it, they leaving it, they doing this, they doing that with it, they not, you know, you're going to look like, what do you need another toy for? So you got to make sure that you're taking care of all the things that you need to take care of and being grateful for what the Lord bless you with because it's the Lord can take it away. So we have to make sure that we're really taking care of the things that the Lord blessed us with and making sure that we're really just overall being grateful. So just go ahead and write that list and throw it away because none of that matters. You Why are you thinking about tomorrow? Why, why are you doing that? Just focus on what you got going on and be grateful for it. And if you do see others and they may have, let's say within our Israelite community, because we're not going to talk about the wicked because we already know that we're not supposed to even be, you know, uh, I'm trying to figure out if I should bring that precept out. Yeah, I'll bring it out. I wasn't trying to make this too long. So I can go. Let me see. This Proverbs 24 and 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious of the wicked. For there shall no reward. So like you, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear the Lord, so like you fear the Lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change for their calamity shall rise suddenly and who knoweth the ruin of them both. So you can't be, you can't be covetousness of wicked people. You don't know what they had to do to get what they got. You don't know. We do know, but some of them had to do to get what they got, but don't. Don't be worried about what wicked these celebrities and all of these influencers, they, they all live a fake life. They all just don't know what's going on. But let's say, for instance, even in our Israelite community, let's say you do see someone that's doing well that, you know, you don't know what, you don't know what in the world a brother or sister had to go through to be able to do the things that the Lord blessed them with. You don't know what people was doing in a past life you don't you just don't know what people got going on so you should be happy you should be happy if you see oh sister just had a baby but i want a baby but i'm not having a baby and the lord not blessing me with a baby so you don't even want to say congratulations you know you can't you can't be nasty you can't be nasty because the lord is not going to bless you the lord is going to give every man according to his works if you act nasty then you're just going to have that spirit on you and nasty things are going to happen to you. And I was telling sisters earlier today about um, Leah and Rachel. How with Leah, she pretty much... And I'm glad it's the spirit that I just got brought up because I almost forgot about it. But I'm glad that we have that example. I'm grateful because Leah, you know, she... I mean, Rachel, she she wanted children so bad. You know, mm, so lucky. To the point that she was, excuse me, she was, you know... 
vexing her husband. You know, she was, give me mad drakes or I'll die. Give me a son or I'll die. You know, she had a spirit of covetousness on her where she coveted so much of what her sister had, which was her sister having children. And she coveted and she wasn't content with, well, let me be thankful for what I do have, which is my sister kids, which is, you know, ultimately like my kids. And I'll take care of them and I'll raise them up, you know, and I'll, you know, try to be be the best that I could be towards them. But she wanted children so bad that the Lord finally gave her children in her old age. But she was never really able fully to be the mother that she wanted to be towards her children because Joseph got taken into captivity to be a servant in Egypt. And because she died, then she, she died giving birth to Benjamin. So she was never able to be that mother that she wanted to be. But she wanted so badly to be a mother, but she ended up dying in childbirth. And it's like, that's a prime example of being content because you never, the Lord can be protecting you from something. You know, you want that extra money. You want that, that you want that vacation. You want that lifestyle. You want to live a, a life of luxury, you know. But the Lord is not giving us that in this captivity because he's protecting us and protecting our peace so that we're able to continue to focus on him so that we're ultimately able to get the kingdom of heaven. Just like he said with the rich man, you know, the eye going through, I mean, the needle going through the eye of a rich man, you know, when it comes down again, the kingdom of heaven. So even with the one brother, let me get that one precept. Yo, we doing a watermelon fast, right? I don't, I don't, I don't post on um, YouTube like that. I'm so sorry, but yeah, some sisters we're doing a watermelon fast, and somebody just texted talking about some I'm hungry. I am too. <laughs> um, let me see. This is Luke. Um. So I hear. Hold on, I'm I'm actually reading it. So I can uh, bear with me. I'm in Luke chapter 16. I gotta actually read this. I need to put my glasses on. Hold oh, on. Don't 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 stop watching, y'all. I'm still here. Hold on. Just give me a moment. I'm reading this chapter right quick. Them I don't think this is the chapter. Hold on. Maybe it's in Oh, oh, okay, I got it. Let me go to it. Okay, it's, I think it's... Um, let me get more. Hold on. Oh, I got it. Okay, let's start at verse 20. This is Mark 10 and 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my... Okay, let's start at 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Yahweh said unto him, Why callest thou me good? For there is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false, false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Yahweh shall I beholding him loved him, beholding him loved him, and said unto him, One thing that, Salaki, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, 
and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Yehoshai looked round about, and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Am I reading KJV? Enter into the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Yehoshai answered again and said unto him, to them, Children, how hard is it for the kingdom? So like he had children. How hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Yehoshai looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And I guess we can finish reading it because I was just saying we're still going to have to forsake our houses, our family. We're going to have to forsake a lot, you know, to get the kingdom. And Yehoshua looking up upon them said with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And Yehoshua answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold, now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come to eternal life. But many that are first shall be last. So like many that, many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So you're going to have to forsake a lot to get the kingdom of heaven. And all the things that you're going to have to forsake, look around. And just be grateful that you got it right now. And thank you, how about Shimmy Shai. Because it's going to be a time where you're not going to have anything. You're not going to have a pot to piss in. You know, you're going to be on the run, being a pilgrim on this earth. So let's be content and be grateful for the things that the Lord has blessed us with. And let me get another precept. A couple more precepts. I just think about it. Oh, well, I praise to the most high. This is um, Proverbs 15. And um, 16. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. So it's better with better having a little bit and you fear the Lord than having that great treasure and trouble. You know what they say? More money, more problems. And let me get one more precept. Um, so I can. It's Matthew 6 and um, 19. Do not lay up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break, break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So you got to ask yourself, where, where is your mind at? Where, what is your mind fixated and focused on? Where is your treasure at? What, what is really a tr your treasure? Is it being covetous after what other people have and desiring this, that, and the third and not being content? Or is it being focused on the kingdom of heaven? That's what you want your treasure to be. Oh my gosh, your heart is almost six minutes long. And then let's go back to um, 6 and 33 to close it out, y'all. But seek ye the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. So, call hello, Yahweh Bashem, Hamashiach, Wamalak, Yahweh Shai. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. This was a, a long video, and I do apologize. Lord willing, it was edifying the sisters. Um, I'm just so grateful for y'all, and, you know, just to love and support, and y'all being patient with me. And, you know, I'm going to try to post more. I'm going to try the most I put in my spirit, but as you can see, I have a lot going on you didn't hurt dogs you didn't hurt animals 
kids, you know, I'm, it's a lot for me to, you know, try to make videos, but just throw up prayers for me that the Lord put in my spirit to try to do more videos for y'all, and I hope this was edifying through the spirit. I love y'all. Lord willing, y'all are able to enjoy y'all night, and shalom.